Uh, hey everybody, this is Mr. K. Uh, I thought I'd make a, a pretty fun little video here because uh, some of you might be wondering why do I have to learn all of this calculus and stuff? You know, what's the point of calculus? And we get told o over and over that we use it in the real world pretty often and it has lots of applications. Uh, but, you know, finding the derivative and finding the integral of things, you know, you might be wondering, when do I, when would I actually use something like that? Well, it turns out that um, we use it quite often, and I'm actually going to show you an example of using, in real life, a derivative. All right. Uh, this is actually just a bit of data that I pulled from a, a textbook of mine from college. Uh, and if you actually want to see this data listed here, this is my, these are all my x values, 1 through 16. And these are all my y values right here. All right, and the goal is we have to find a way to uh, plot a uh, curve through here. And I think we're going to be doing a quadratic regression here. So how can we actually get a quadratic curve to go through this uh, set of data perfectly? Well, obviously, if we have a computer well, then we can just make the computer do it for us. So like a nonlinear model fit of, uh, you know, transpose L and uh, I don't know, let's clear out A, B and C. And I mean, we could do it like this. Um, B times X plus C. You know, we could take the normal of that. So this is me making the making Mathematica do it for us, right? So if I were to come up here and actually do the quadratic regression of that, x from one to sixteen. I mean, obviously, I can make I can make that curve go through here. Okay, uh, and that's fine. But well, what did the what did Mathematica actually do? You know, how did the computer program get this curve? Well, it turns out that it had actually used calculus in order to find this curve. And I'm actually going to show you how to do that yourselves. All right. Um, by the way, just for uh, giggles here, let's uh, see how good of a fit that is. Yeah. So this has an R squared value of 0.999942, meaning it's pretty much dead on the data. It's almost almost a perfect line. All right. So how did uh, Mathematica and your TI-84s, for uh, as a matter of fact, find this equation right here? 4.43 minus 2.7 times x, 1.59. How did it find it? Well, uh, if you look, it says that it uses something called the uh, least squares criterion, um, which is actually, uh, it, it was simple enough that I thought it was, um, you know, I, I figured it was easy enough to actually teach it in a YouTube video to high schoolers. All it says is uh, if you wanted to take the dis the vertical distance between uh, the data point and the point on the curve and you were to square uh, the difference between the two and sum all those uh, differences up, we're going to try to minimize the sum of those squared differences. Uh, and it turns out that when you hear that buzzword minimize, it immediately tells you you need to do some type of calculus and it turns out that we can. So this is the equation that we're going to be using here. Uh, this S represents a sum and we're summing each of uh, these differences here. So Y sub I is actually uh, a Y data point here. So like uh, that Y sub I would correspond to, let's say like the number 11 here. Okay. And uh, this F of X just tells you, well, what's that point on the curve? 
All right, so if I'm dealing with 11 here, I wanna know what f of three is here. So remember, I, I defined my f value for uh, this curve here. So if I have 11 here, what is f of three? It's 11.3657. All right, so if I do three minus that, I'm gonna get, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 11 minus that, because I'm talking about the y values here. I'm gonna get negative 0.365. Then I am going to square that, and I'll get 0.133701. All right, and I'm gonna be doing that for each one of these things. I'm going to be doing 11 minus f of three, 21 minus f of four, 32 minus f of five, and squaring that. And I would need to. I need to try to minimize that. Uh, I need to minimize this total here. Well, how do we actually do that? Well, first of all, we need to figure out what f should be. Okay, what function are we going to pick? And this one, you need to use. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of tricks to figure out which one you want to pick, but uh, nothing really compares with just uh, eyeballing it. You know, looking at the actual data here. It definitely seems like it looks like it follows some type of a parabolic path. So a first good candidate might be to use a quadratic regression. So with that in mind, we're going to let f of x equal ax squared plus bx plus c. And when you're doing a minus sign, that minus sign obviously distributes to each one of those things. All right, so now that I have my uh, sum here, I need to minimize the sum. So for my 12th graders here, you might remember that anytime you hear maximize or minimize, you need to take the derivative and set it equal to zero. Only this time, we're not taking the derivative with respect to x or y. Keep in mind that x, the, these x's and y's, we actually know what those are. Those are the data points that we already have. Uh, by the way, for those of you who aren't familiar, this sigma means sum. So this Greek letter is uh, sigma. And uh, what that means is we're actually adding all of these things together. So I'm adding this difference squared, and I'm adding this difference squared. So this is the same thing as this, okay? So uh, you wanna take the derivative and set it equal to zero, but we're not taking, it, taking the derivative with respect to y. These are these things we know. And these x's, we already know that, all right? They, they gave us, they give us the data, all right? What we do not know, we don't know A, we don't know B, and we don't know C. Those three little coefficients, that's what we need to figure out, okay? And it turns out that we have to take the derivative of S with respect to A, then we have to take, and set that equal to zero. Then we have to take the derivative of S with respect to B and set that equal to zero. Then we have to take the derivative of s with respect to c and set that equal to zero. Uh, and you don't actually take the uh, derivative per se. You're going to take something called the partial derivative, which uh, isn't too, it, it's, it's exactly, it works exactly the same as a regular derivative, only you're treating uh, these little x values as constants. Okay. So uh, let's start with taking the partial derivative of s with respect to a. What that means is, let's come back up to here, uh, we're going to treat any other variable like b and c and x's and y's, we're gonna treat everything as a regular old number except for a. a is gonna be the one thing we're gonna be taking the derivative of and we're going to ignore whether or not b or c is dependent on a. So if we treat a as the thing we're uh, taking the derivative for, all right, so let's do the chain rule, right? So if we're taking the derivative of this entire thing, we gotta bring this two down, and that's the derivative of the outside. Okay, so that's where uh, this little two comes from. The two comes down. Okay, and then you have to take the derivative of the inside. You have to multiply this by the derivative of the inside. Well, since we're taking the partial derivative, this is just a number, and when we take the derivative of a number, that goes away. B and X are treated as numbers. 
So this goes away, and obviously this goes away for the same reason. And when we take the derivative of this thing, uh, this little x squared thing, this is just a number, and this is just like, you know, one variable. So when we take the derivative of this, this a just drops. So we multiply the last thing that we got here by negative x sub i squared. And so the derivative of the outside means you bring the 2 down, and the times the derivative of the inside would be negative x sub i squared. That's this part connected to this a. And we set this entire partial derivative equal to 0. All right? Now, if we keep going, we could do the same thing. We have to do the same thing for the other two. We need to do the same thing for b. So the 2 comes down, and this time all these things, all the a goes away, the c goes away, and this time we, we have to multiply the uh, derivative of the outside with the derivative of the inside, which is now negative x sub i, because the b goes away. So negative x sub i, and that 2 comes down, that's where this 2 comes from. We set this entire partial derivative equal to 0. And likewise, we do the same thing for this c, the 2 comes down, and this is just like negative x. So when the derivative of negative x is just negative 1. So we'll have negative 2 times this sum is equal to 0. Cool. Now this whole thing can be uh, rearranged and redistributed here. So uh, this x sub i squared can distribute to each one of these. This x can distribute to each one of these. And, uh, you know, this negative can distribute to each one of these. Obviously, we can divide everything by 2, and, uh, you know, the, the 0 divided by 2, so the 2s actually go away. And the, actually, this ne all these negatives go away, too. Like, the negative 2 can be divided to the 0, the negative 2, the negative 2. So it's pretty nice. So now all we got to do is just distribute this x sub i to each one of these and uh, add these to the right. And then what do we get? Well, we're going to get the sum of x sub i squared times y is equal to a times this sum plus b times this sum plus c times this sum. And likewise, for the second equation, you're going to get this. And for the third equation, you're going to get this. Now, don't be intimidated by any of this stuff. All right, well, I mean, let, let's handle this thing right here, the sum of x sub i squared times y. Well, what that says is uh, I'll, I'll show it to you very simply. So let's let's start with like this one. All right, so um, we're gonna add all these numbers up in a special way. The first thing is going to be one times one times three. So the first number is three. And then it's gonna be two times two times six. So we have three plus two times two is four times six is 24. So three plus 24. Then it's going to be 3 times 3 times 11. So 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 11 is 99. So 3 plus 24 plus 99. And you're just adding all of these up in that particular way. And that's going to be this sum. It's going to be a pretty big number here. I mean, I mean let, let's find out. So um, let's say uh, the total of uh, the, all the x's squared times all of the y's. And we're just adding it all up. It's going to be 350,228. All right, so this is actually a number. And likewise, you can just take the sum of all the x's where each one is to the fourth power. And so this is going to be one big number. All right, in fact, I mean, why don't we just show you what that first one looks like? So we're going to have, you know, the this particular thing right here. And then it's going to be a times the total of all the x's to uh, the fourth power plus b times the total of all the x's to the third power plus c times the total of all the x's squared. So that first equation is just going to be 350,228 is equal to 243,848 times a plus, you know, 18,000 times B, plus 1496 times C, all right? That's what this first equation is. Similarly, you can get this one, 
And similarly, you can get this one. This little M just represents, well, how many X's are there? You know, in this case, we have 16. All right, so M in this case is equal to 16. And now you just have a system of linear equations, which you can easily solve with, you know, a graphing calculator. Or in my case, I can just have Mathematica do it for me. But uh, whatever, let's actually do this now. All right, so uh, let's start this all over from scratch. I'm not gonna do a, a linear, I'm not, not gonna do the nonlinear model fit. I just have this thing, okay? So I, uh, I don't have this now and uh, definitely don't have that. I still have my X's and Y's. Okay, so this was just a demo, cool. Now, this is me actually solving all these three equations right here. I'm actually solving all three of these equations for A, B, and C. So when I do that, I have A is equal to this fraction, <clears throat> B is equal to this fraction, and C is equal to this fraction pretty nice and uh, what does that ultimately get me well it gets me this equation right here 248 to you know you can you can read it for yourself I have my X here and I have my X squared right here so I solve that system of equations and I get this cool equation right here I can set F equal to that uh, you know what, why don't we do this uh, with uh, decimals? So that way we can actually compare it to the uh, Mathematica model and see if it's, uh, see if it's any better. Okay, uh, all right, so let's actually plot it now. And as you can see, my curve is dead on. Pretty good. And uh, what is my R squared value point? 99942. Okay, so pretty pretty spot on here. Now let's actually compare it to uh, the nonlinear model fit. So this was the equation that I got by following this process, which is the least squared criterion. All right, now we're going to have Mathematica do the exact same thing. Uh, I need to clear this out, A, B, and C. I'm going to take the normal of this thing, which is that times x plus c, declare my constants. And as you can see, they're exactly the same, pretty much. So this was a Mathematica's model right here. And I'm obviously, it seems like it, it got off by a little bit way at the end here. And that there's a little bit of deviation way over here, but they're basically exactly the same. Uh, they're uh, both the uh, nonlinear model fit uh, and this particular thing. They both use the least squared criterion. At least I believe they do. Uh, I think they do. Uh, anyway, there, there's a, there's several different uh, fits in Mathematica. This one might not be a, a least squared criterion. It might be a, a Chebyshev criterion, which is similar. But as you can see, both of them are very, very good. And uh, this was just a demonstration for how you can actually get a, uh, a, a quadratic regression through a bunch of data, and you do it through calculus. So this was just a practical application of calculus. Um, it would look pretty sick on an IA report, to be totally honest, but, uh, you know, <laughs> that it, to show all your work for a quadratic regression would be pretty amazing. Uh, but I, I don't know. You, you'd, we'd have to talk about it and see if that would actually fly. But uh, anyway, this is a practical application of calculus. I hope you all enjoyed it very much. And, uh, you know, just a fun little video. Take care. Bye-bye.